Hello, good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. It's lovely to have you here. Um, if you're new, a special welcome to you. And if you're not new, a special welcome to you. And uh, as most of you know, we spend um, a short time together on Tuesday evenings. Um, we read a bit and sing a bit, pray a bit, and hope it's helpful for you. So welcome. And tonight we're going to think about uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, it's just been Pentecost on Sunday. Um, and we'll read a little of the story of that. Um, if that's not familiar to you, hopefully it will become a bit clearer. And if it is, it's always good to read these things again. Um, so we're going to read from two parts of the Bible about the story of um, Pentecost and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, and then we'll sing a couple of songs. One of them is fairly new. And one of them is old words to a new tune written by a friend of mine. So um, I really hope it's helpful for you. So we will pray. Um, and then we'll, no, we'll read first and then we'll pray and then we'll sing together. So um, firstly from John 20. Uh, this is just after the resurrection of Jesus at Easter. And the disciples are hiding away, um, fearing what will happen to them. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the, showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy, and when they saw the Lord, again he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So Jesus suddenly appearing to his friends, his disciples, um, who were hiding and breathing on them and breathing, them, breathing on them and filling them with the Holy Spirit. Um, and then this was a foretaste of what was going to happen later. Um, so we turn to Act 2. On the day of Fe Pentecost, which was a, an, a festival at the time, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house they were sitting in. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages, as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. And they went on to discuss what could this mean, and some nearby um, just thought they'd been drinking and that that was the explanation um, so we skip on a little bit and then Peter stands up one of the disciples stands forward and says no you're wrong, they're not drunk and starts to explain what's going on he said no what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel in the last days God says I will pour out my spirit upon all people your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens below, above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved people of Israel, listen. God publicly endorsed Jesus the Nazarene by doing powerful miracles, wonders, and signs through him, as you well know. But God knew that this would happen, and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. With the help of lawless Gentiles, you nailed him to a cross and killed him, but God released him from the horrors of death and raised him back to life, for death could not keep him in its grip. King David said this about him. I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises. 
My body rests in hope, for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life and will fill me with the joy of your presence. So Peter goes on to say, Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself, for he died and was buried, and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet, and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the Father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see and hear today. So what an amazing story. And let's pray, and then we're going to sing. And we're going to be singing about being filled with the Spirit because that gift is for us too and we're going to pray for that now too. Um, The Bible tells us to go on being filled with the Holy Spirit, to keep asking. So God, as we read those wonderful words in the Bible about how you poured out your Holy Spirit on all people, we ask that you would do that now for us. Come by your Spirit and fill us. Let the, um, that invisible infilling be made visible in how we then change and how we live. And how um, the fruit of your Holy Spirit is love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control. So would you fill us so that the fruit that we produce in our lives is that? Change us from within. Make Jesus clear to us. And let that be something that is evident to other people so that they may, be, they may come to know you too. In Jesus' name, amen.
Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love what Thou dost love, and do what Thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breathe on me, breath of God, breathe on me, breathe on me, breathe on me, breath of God, breathe on me, breathe. This earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Breathe on me, breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me, breathe on me. So I shall never die, but live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. Breathe on. So Jesus, would you breathe on us? Would you fill us with your Holy Spirit? Fill us with your joy and your peace and your love and change us to be more like you. You know our weaknesses. You know our failings. But you have been, they have been nailed to the cross with you. And so would you come and replace those things in our lives with joy, peace and love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope that was um, a helpful time for you. It's great to have you here. So thank you. And um, I will see you again soon. I think Nicola will be back next Tuesday. Uh, you can also catch up with our Sunday service on YouTube if you're interested in that. If you didn't know, um, it's easy to find if you search Ellen Parish Church. And uh, there's more about Pentecost and being filled with the Holy Spirit um, there. Um, and anyway, so yes, uh, feel free to catch up on that. And I will see you again soon. Have a good rest of your evening.